What's going down, everybody? This is Bronco Juggalo. And Bill. And we are back with another Castle the King Bill. kind of do these ones back to back we are doing it chapter dose two <laughs> and guys i love this movie just to let you know right up front in my opinion my considered opinion thank you very much this is the closest we come to the actual book of it now when you put them together, the two movies together, it's pretty damn accurate. There are yeah. some things they changed, whatever. But this right here, this chapter is spot on, pretty damn close. Pretty close. And I love what it says back here. A truly epic conclusion to one of the greatest horror stories in cinema history. Damn straight. Directed by Andres Muschietti. Starring Bill Hader as Richie. James Ranson as Eddie who you may remember from Sinister 1 and 2 and The Black Phone. Yep. In 2016, Pennywise returns from the grave and Mike brings back the Losers Club to Derry to finish him off once and for all. Now, this movie had a $79 million budget and brought in $473 million at the box office. There you go. Technically, they say it was not quite as successful as the first I don't know why it had a dip. I don't really understand. Usually sequels I, do. I know that a lot of people didn't like this one as much as the first one. I, I think it was better. So maybe word of mouth hurt it a little bit. But it still was a success. It still made a lot of money. And I think it's a great film. I think both these films are great. I don't think one's better than the other, honestly. I like them both. Okay. And literally, usually, if I have time... If I want to watch the first one, I want to watch the second one right after. Because I like the whole thing. I think that one of the things that did hurt this movie was the mixed reviews from the critics. A yes. Bit of word of mouth, but it also had some very stiff competition in the box office. This one came up against some titans. I mean, it really did. The director actually wanted to bring back some of the controversial topics that were skipped over in the first film. Yes. He actually wanted to bring that stuff back in, and they... They did a little bit of it. They touched a little bit on it, but they had already changed the story so much that they really couldn't do a lot of it. Yeah. So I say kudos to him, but you know, you kind of made your bed with the first one. So yeah. Yeah. And I like that too. bring that controversial stuff back because guess what? You might find it offensive, but you need to be offended. Yeah. You should be. If you're not, something's wrong with you. Well, it's not even that. If you find it offensive, turn it off and go watch something else. Exactly. Don't sit there and bitch about it. Go fuck yourself if you find it offensive. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, I, I think the story should have been presented the way it was from the book originally. That's just my two take my take on it. I know a lot of people don't like that. And I also don't give a fuck about that either. So, well, Except for the turtle thing. I know taking that out. Well, there's there's the difference yeah. between taking things out for story reasons and... Well, and, and, and kind of hard to cinema. Well, it's not even that. It's story reasons, and it's time, and it's you know, and just making everything believable and yeah, you know, realism yeah. and all that. There's all those different things, but to change something just because it's quote unquote controversial, go fuck yourself. And supposedly there is a prequel series to this movie starring Bill Skarsgård in the works. So I'm right. happy to report on that. That's still supposedly in the works. I just read about it. Hopefully we'll get that soon. Now, as far as pros and cons, I have no cons. I had some in the first movie. I have none for this one. That's why I say I like this chapter better, and it's closer to the story, I think. I love this film. This made my top... Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no. It actually made my top ten horror films. Hmm. You know, I mean, when I redid, it made my top ten horror films, and it, and it made my top ten 
of the last decade. I mean, you know, it's I love this film a lot. Okay, okay. So, wow, that's some good praise. Mm-hmm. Now, I like this film too. I guess the only thing that I had with this film, I wish they still would have kept one aspect in there, and that was two of our characters that you get to briefly meet, but in the book, they follow, one is the husband, mm-hmm. following, what's his wife's name again? Beverly. Beverly. Following Beverly all the way to Derry, it, it's actually kind of... And he ends up getting killed. It's kind of a big thing mm-hmm. with the ending, though. Yeah. And I kind of didn't like they cut that out. Um, Probably now, time constraints. Yeah. Now, the wife... Uh, uh, be, uh, Bill's, Bill's wife, wife. The actress. They cut... They, they show her at the, you know, at the beginning, but then... She also goes to Derry, and they took that out of it, too. Yeah. She gets fucked up in the head in the book. She gets fucked up in the head by the deadlights. And Bill, after they defeat Pennywise, Bill actually brings her out of it by putting her on the back of Silver, his bike. Yep. And just flying with her. And slowly, she's like, and she grabs on tighter. What the fuck are we doing? Why? Are we? No. Yeah. That's how it happens in the book. I, I can see why they would leave that out, but yeah. you know, just time constraints, whatever. Yeah, that's you know, the only it's thing not I got. crucial to the story. Not, well, but, but the husband, um, yeah. I think the the reason, well, they show him trying to beat her and her getting back at him. Yeah, they never but, go into their backstory I mean, either. Yeah, like just, he does. Yeah. He does follow her to Derry in the book, and he ends up dying and. You know, it's a whole thing. And if they and also in... in the book, Bill and Beverly start to fuck. They start fucking. He forgets that he has a wife completely because he's back in Derry. Yep. They start fucking, and all of a sudden she starts orgasming like huge, and it's like the most intense thing she's ever felt. And the reason why is because everything rushes back to her that she ended up fucking all of them in turn at the end of what they all the orgy, even though it was actually a train. They ran a train on her, basically. Um, yeah. But it was her way of sealing what they did together. Instead of the whole slicing hands thing, they fucked in the book. Yes. Which, you know, whatever. I get leaving that out, I guess. Yeah, I, I get, get leaving that. that part out. But, like, in that, but that's when he remembers that he has a wife. And he remembers, like, oh, shit, what the fuck are we doing? I've got a wife. You know, blah, blah, blah. You know, whatever. And um, then she f- figures out that it's Ben that loved her the most, and then she leaves with Ben. Yes. But they and something else about this is they all start to lose their memories again. Oh yeah, even, right away. Even, while they're still in Derry, they start to lose their memories. And then Mike reaches out, and it takes him a minute to figure out who he is again. But so that in the book that makes me wonder because in this one they don't lose their memories in the movie, but in the book they did. So it made me wonder if Stephen King was originally thinking of maybe a follow-up to it, but it never happened. Who so knows? I don't know. So, But that's what we do here in Castle of the Kingdom. We like to talk about the movies and the books a little bit, if we've read the books, of course. Yes. And I've read this one a hundred times. So. I haven't read it a hundred times, but I've read it a couple. Hmm. So, on with some pros? Yes. I did my con. Proceed. I like that they keep the opening of the book true. When we talk about them bringing back controversial things, yes. one of the things that was going to be cut out supposedly was the fact that it was a gay couple that gets... Um, they're get, there's a gay couple at the beginning of the book and in the beginning of this film, and they're being hated on. They're being treated like garbage by some local dumbasses. Local yokels. You know, that want to think they're fucking tough guys or whatever, and... You know, and the one yeah. gay guy, like, he fights back. and he. And, but what starts it is he, just like in the book, he does this in the book, just like in the movie, he antagonizes them. Like, oh, you know, you just want, I don't remember what he said. He I don't remember exactly. exactly. But it's like, oh, you know, you like it or something like that. I don't remember. So whatever he said. Yeah. But I was like, you know what? Good for that dude. He should have beat their asses. But I knew where it was going because I, I've read the book so many times. So it yep. sucked that that happened to him. But they keep everything even like when they when they go to him being eaten by Pennywise, Pennywise is literally eating out his arm under his armpit, which is in the book. 
Yep. I fucking love that. They basically took that from the page to the screen, shot for word for shot for word. I fucking love the opening of this movie. It is cool. Love it as well. And that's how the whole books are. You know, it jumps back and forth. Yes. They didn't do that in this, but they did show a couple flashbacks. They do a little more but, in this one. You know, it it was just... I, I get they made that artistic choice, but I love that they kept the opening of the book in this movie. I will agree with that. My first pro for this film is the jumping back that we do. One of the things I did not like about the first film, but I didn't say this because I waited here. We went and we saw the clubhouse. The clubhouse was a big part of the book. And we got that in this movie where we didn't get any of it in the first film. Mm -hmm. But I didn't make it a con in the first film because we get it here in the second film. The right. clubhouse that they build in the ground. Yeah. And they go back to it and find it again. Eh. Mm. And that's where we got, ceiling. Yeah. That's where we got a couple flashbacks of like, you know. Yeah. Because, and that's something else too. I like how, and this is just, I didn't even write this down, but it's just, I'm thinking about it now. No, go for it. Stanley is still very present in the book, even though he's dead. And they, they accomplished yes. that with the jumping back and forth. In this, you can feel his presence by not only that flashback scene, but by what happens later. And I'm sorry if I've already given some spoilers. If you haven't seen this, you should go see it. But, and here comes another one. There is a letter that is written after Stanley commits suicide, because he doesn't go back with him, Derry. If you've nope. read the book, you know this. We do discuss spoilers on this segment, guys. Um, he commits suicide because he's scared, but he knew why he had to do that. Yes. And there's letters that he sends out to everybody that they get afterwards, after everything happens. Now, that's a little bit different in the book, just like the whole thing with the um, Native American urn thing. That's a different in the book. Yes, it is. But I can see why they did it for story purposes in the movie. I can understand it. Just like, you know, when Richie has the flashbacks, it's to video games instead of you know, him watching the the movies in the, the old Universal movies in the cinema from the 60s or whatever, you know? Yeah. Those changes had to be done. I get it. That's fine. But I like that you still felt his presence by those flashback scenes in the clubhouse. You still feel like he's part of the team. Yes, he is a part of the film. I really like that Mike is the narrator. I like that they actually included narration in the film because it kind of gives it that storybook kind of feel. It does. It gives the narration it that, does. Yeah, it gives it a more literary feel. And I like that it's Mike because in the book, just like in the movie, it's Mike that holds everything together. It's Mike that holds the history. It's Mike that tells the tale. And Mike brings you know, the back. He's not narrating in the book, but it's it's kind of like him that's he is he even though they're all the protagonists, he is the protagonist that instigates the entire thing. And that's what I like about him being the narrator. Nice. Another big pro of mine for this film is when Bev goes home. Her old apartment building. This entire scene from start to finish is fucking amazing. It's creepy too. It, yeah, it's creepy as hell, especially the fucking old lady. The old lady dancing behind her back in the fucking nude that was yeah. in the kitchen. That was, was like weird. Wait a minute. Huh? Yeah. And then when she finally leaves and the whole building's just dilapidated, where, as before, it looked like she had never left. Right, yeah. She even found, what? Which is... That old letter and pack of cigarettes. It does that in the movie. It does that in the book. Yep. All that is from straight from the book. It was Pennywise the whole time. It gets older and older and grotesque, grotesque. And she realizes that it did say Kirsch on the thing, not Marsh. And then when she leaves, the building is fucked up, and yep. that's how it is in the book. And again, we get straight from the page to the screen. Which is I hard to that. do. Yeah. They did it so much better in this one, I think, than they even did in the first one. Now, in the first one, we talked about the bathroom scene. That, yes. to me, was straight that from the page to the book. straight from it. You know, to the screen. And they do the same thing in this entire film, in my opinion. Even the giant spider at the end of the movie that everybody fucking hated, the way Pennywise looked as the spider is what I picture in my mind when I, when I 
read the book. What yeah. they did in the 91 miniseries, and I know they were limited. I get it. Yeah, technology was very limited. Not just technology, but it was TV. It yeah. was budget. It was, you know, it wasn't a major film or anything. You no, know? no. If it would have been a major film, maybe they could have gotten the guys that did fucking Star Wars or Terminator or something in there, you know, and eh. did some. But I get that it wasn't what it is, but I just, to me, that's one of the things that I hated about that 91 miniseries. And we're going to give that one another shot, too. We're yeah, going to go again. Will. You like it a lot more than I, I do. I do like it. But, okay, we, we, we... But the end of that film yeah. is, yeah. I've oh. kind of beat that point into the ground that I'm not a big fan of that. I'm sorry, but, the, but I'm just talking about the CGI of the spider, Pennywise, it, you know, creature. I enjoyed. I thought it looked good. I liked it. I don't see why people had a problem with it. It is what it is, though. You're right. You know, it is. Everybody's got their own tastes, and more power to you. Yes, exactly. Okay, going back to you know scenes, kind of straight out of the book, the Chinese restaurant. Mm-hmm. Now you didn't. I I remember correctly. You didn't have the kid come up to him to trash mouth and talk about his comedy or what. I don't believe I don't so. No, that because. He wasn't a comedian. That's one thing they yeah, changed. They wasn't. changed his character a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I get it, though. I think what they were trying to do is make it more relevant to now because, I mean, no, I'm not saying nobody listens to the radio, but honestly, who listens to the radio anymore? You got either Sirius, Satellite, whatever. It's still but radio. In the, in the 80s, or in the in the original book... He was a DJ. He was a radio DJ. He was a shock jock like Howard Stern. You know? Yes. Um, and he wasn't a comedian. He was a shock jock. But I think that they did it well. I think they did. It. I love when he admits that he didn't write his own jokes and the and uh, and he's like, I fucking knew it. I fucking knew yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. But I but I love the whole dinner scene. Yeah, the, and whole, the that, whole thing with the cookies and everything. It that was, was fucking awesome. That was one thing I thought they did okay in the ninety one with the technology oh, they yeah. had with the eyeball and all looking out. Yes, but this one with the CGI, I thought that was cool that they were able to get more into. Some people will be like, oh, that was stupid or whatever because it's CGI and it looks stupid. But if you read the book and l- listen to the descriptions of that, what's going what's on What's going that, on in this? You know, like really read it and just think about it in your mind's eye, so yeah. to speak. Theater of the mind, you know. I think they did pretty good with it I on this one. I really like that dinner scene. Yes. Yeah. That's one thing I liked from both of the, the iterations. I like the dinner scene in the 91 as well. Uh, one of my pros for this, and this is just a personal thing for me, I just thought it was really funny, was the leper completely just throwing up all over Eddie. <laughs> I fucking loved it. And the reason I loved it so much and what made me laugh so hard, and I forgot yeah. about this till just now, was he does it to that song, Angel in the Morning. Oh, and yeah. it's so funny. It's like... Come angel in the morning, angel. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just like, that, that was, was fucking that hilarious. That was funny. It was hilarious. I know, like you said, exorcist moment. It's yeah, still an exorcist moment. It was still hilarious. So I love that. It, and uh, it showed that you can put levity into a horror film, and there yep. should be a levity in every horror film yep. without making it a horror comedy. This was not a horror comedy. But no, but that but was funny. Comedy has a place in every single horror film, in my opinion, because uh, you have to be able to uh, you have to set the pe- person up for the scare. You either got to build tension, build tension, build tension, build tension to a big scare, or you have to build a little tension, give them that oh we're safe with the laugh moment, and then you turn around and hit them so it fucks them up. The only that's time. how com- that's how comedy works in horror, even without yeah. it being a horror comedy. The only time I've ever heard that song used better was at the opening credits of Deadpool. Yes. yes. That's the only time both, I can name. Both good examples. That, that both is good better examples. than this one. Yeah, both good examples. <laughs> Same song. Okay, my next pro for this movie. I don't know why they did it twice. We did it once in the first film. Maybe because it's chapter two, we did it twice. We gave homage to the turtle again. I know it's something three that... Three times. Three. They do it once in the first movie and twice in this movie. Yeah, I just said that. Oh, I thought... Okay, never mind. I, I thought you meant that. like this was the second twice time. Twice in this okay. movie, gotcha. but only once in the first. Gotcha. Okay. Let me see if I remember. 
Ah, okay. The first turtle is in Ben's penthouse? What? It, it's, it's not a penthouse. It's like the fucking lake house that fucking Batman has in... He has Batman a lot of glass Superman. in that house. Yeah, it's all glass and shit. It's like when you have a totally private estate in your own private lake and nobody can see you around you for miles, so... So you have windows you know, everywhere. Yeah. But there's a golden turtle why. on the floor. There is a golden turtle. And then we had a uh, classroom? Seat? Yeah, it was in yeah. the classroom. And then we had the turtle again in dairy in the classroom. Yep. Maybe they put the turtle twice just because it's chapter two. And only once because it was chapter one. Maybe. Who knows? But I still like the fact that we got a shout out to the turtle just because he was a big part of the book. He, he was a big part of the ending of the book. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. yeah, you're right. More of a big part of the ending more than anything. But it was something that if you read it, man, you can put some real imagination. I still, to that part. I still say, I still say at that point in time when King was writing the book, that's when he decided to probably pop a few pills and snort a few lines. And I, yeah, this book that's was, what came out. This book was written during his drug and alcohol Just saying, days. You know. It was. And you could tell the drug and alcohol books from the non. Mm -hmm. But you hey, the tell drug them. and alcohol books, if you ask me, the drug and alcohol books were better. Yes, they were. So. In my opinion, they were better as well. It's like jazz, man. No junk, he no had, soul. He'd have some weird-ass fucking dreams. His wife literally banished him to the basement because he'd wake up in the middle of the night because he had a dream, and then he'd get on his typewriter. Yep. And it would wake her up. So she eventually said, fuck you. You're sleeping in the basement if you're going to keep this shit up. Hell yeah. Guys, my final pro. I love the aesthetics of this film. But most specifically, I love the aesthetics of the old house. Why oh, am I yeah. bringing that as my final pro? It's just kind of how I wrote them down. But I do. I love the way the house looks when they leave and when they show up. When they show up, it you know they call it an old spook house or whatever you know, like yeah. you know it's the spooky house on the block. Yeah, it looks like that when they when they show it. It looks like some straight out of like you know a Transylvania movie or maybe the Munsters or something. It looks like a spook house. Dude, we got and, one just down the road. Yes, I know we do, but it's not very spooky during the day or whatever. But no, like, but we should. That still... one looks spooky during the day, you know. Yeah, but that that one down there, we should fucking film part of that house one day and yeah. and put it on there just to show people how fucking just weird this house was. Used to be an old whorehouse back in the day, and was one of the governor's mansions. The governor that used to be the governor. Yeah, he, he bought it, and it was his mansion for a while. Anyways, though. Uh, I like the aesthetics of the house. I like when it crumbles and falls at the end. And I just thought that kind of gave a nice completion to the whole film as far as visuals. And I just think it was a cool way to wrap it up. Yeah. You got anything else? No, that was it. All right, guys. Well, we hope you enjoyed this movie. We hope you enjoyed this review. I love this one. If you haven't watched it yet, check out It Chapter 2. Check, check them both out, out. Hit chapter one first, so that way you get the complete story. Yes, please. And then check out the ninety-one. It. Tell me which one you think is better. Leave your comments down in the comment section below. Peace out and good night.